Last week, I made over $2,000 with DoorDash and Grubhub, so I thought I'd show you exactly what I did to hit that goal and what you can do to do it too. Now, I know the title of this video is how to make $2,000 a week with DoorDash, so I just wanted to clarify that first statement because I did use DoorDash and Grubhub to hit $2,000, but to be honest, sometimes Grubhub was just getting in the way. So I think all these tips that I'm about to give you and all the things I did still apply to if you wanna make $2,000 with just DoorDash. But my first tip actually kind of goes hand in hand with that whole thing. And that would be to use more apps if you have them available to you. That's definitely gonna help you hit $2,000 quicker, but everything after this tip is going to apply to DoorDash only. So if that's the only app you have to use, then all these things will still help you make $2,000 in a week. Let's get right into it. So the first thing I did before I even got started with my week was I went out and bought a bunch of insurers. Now, granted, I could not eat normal food because of my fever blisters, but I made sure I had a bunch of these because this is what I was going to be drinking while I was out on the road. Now, on a normal week, I probably would have meal prepped a lot because that's the easiest way to shorten the amount of time you're wasting making food or trying to go out and find food. So I was drinking like three or four of these a day. And honestly, it's not a bad meal. Like I would drink one and be fairly filled up. So that's an option right there. You can also meal prep, but you just want to make sure you have enough food so you don't have to stop. And so you can only take one break a day because if you're taking more than that, it's probably going to be hard to hit the amount of hours you need to hit $2,000 which leads us into the next tip, which is take one hour break every single day. I found this to be the best way to keep consistent with things. I would go for about seven or eight hours in the morning and then take an hour long break and then do another seven hours at night. And I found that it really makes it easy when you're breaking up the shifts like that and taking that extra long break. If you're taking mini breaks, I find it doesn't really break the whole dash cycle that you're in. And so taking that full hour really helped me out. The next thing that is absolutely crucial that I kind of failed at once I hit the weekend was get sleep. You definitely want to prioritize sleep because if you're only getting five hours during the time you're trying to work this many hours, it's going to be so hard to stay motivated and so hard to stay on the roads that you're just probably gonna end up falling short of your goal. So I definitely prioritized sleep at the beginning of the week. I was getting like seven or eight hours every single night. Then once the weekend hit, I had to do like 17 hour shifts and I ended up only getting like five or six hours of sleep and it made it a lot harder. So you just wanna make sure that you're prioritizing sleep because it really helps. The next thing that I did was I made sure I went later into the night rather than starting early. And that kind of goes hand in hand with prioritizing sleep. I felt better when I slept in to like nine o'clock and then I was out on the roads by 10 o'clock and I would stay out till sometimes two in the morning. So that's kind of what I did. Maybe if you're an early riser and you just function better in the mornings, maybe you want to do the opposite, go as early as you can and then get home earlier. But I found for me, it worked better because my area is a lot busier, even late into the night, like I said, two in the morning. And the days that I started at like eight o'clock or even 7.30, certain days, it just was dead until about 9.30 or even 10.30. And so it just made sense for me to go later in the day rather than start early. The next thing I did, which is probably going to surprise a lot of you guys, is I didn't drink a single ounce of caffeine the entire week. And I felt so much better, so much more energized, and I was honestly amazed. I've been so hooked on caffeine since probably the last three or four years that I've not gone a week without caffeine since then. And let me tell you, it was the best thing ever. I don't know how, I just had so much more energy without drinking caffeine. So if you can get to that point, then I would highly suggest not drinking energy drinks and just focusing on your diet and making sure you have enough calories and all that stuff, making sure you're continuously hydrating and stuff like that, because that's gonna make it so much easier to work the amount of hours you need to. So those first few things were kind of things you can do in your life that help you. Now we're gonna get into the actual strategy that I used to hit $2,000 with DoorDash. And so the next tip I have for you guys is know when to be selective. There are certain times of day and even certain weeks of the month that you can be way more selective with your orders. You can decline five or 10 orders at a time and still know that that 11th order is right around the corner and it's gonna be even better than those that you just declined. But when you're going early in the morning, when you're going really late at night, it's best to just pretty much take what DoorDash gives you. I would never suggest taking anything under $1 per mile, but when it's really late at night, sometimes you see some really huge orders like 
$15 for 16 miles or different things like that. And those can actually be really good orders because there's absolutely no traffic at night. And so you can get those orders done fairly quickly. And so that's something I did. I changed what orders I was willing to accept throughout the day because lunch, I'm gonna be way more selective. Peak dinner times, I'm gonna be really selective. And then also knowing that the week I went was during the March Madness tournament, lots more people were ordering food, so I knew that if I declined a couple orders in a row, it wasn't going to get dead during certain times because there were those games going on and families were ordering big meals. And so just remember that, don't be too picky unless you know the specific times of the month and specific times of the day that you can be. Otherwise, you could find yourself sitting around waiting, which honestly happened to me quite a bit as well because I was being too selective. So I probably could have made even more had I just lowered my standard a little bit. Next thing you want to do is know what restaurants are quick. This is such a huge problem because so many restaurants and it's pretty much the same ones. You can count on what restaurants are going to take a while to get your order. I don't know if it's just their system and DoorDash sends you the order too early or something. I don't really know what it is, but there are just specific restaurants I know in my area that I basically avoid at all costs. Unless the pay is outrageously good, then I'll accept one to those specific restaurants, but otherwise you're just gonna wanna steer clear because once you find out those specific restaurants in your area, that are really slow and take forever and they're just hard pickups. I'm not even necessarily saying that they're always slow, but they're just restaurants that seem disorganized, seem like they don't really care about DoorDash orders all that much. And so you just wanna steer clear of those because you're definitely gonna end up wasting a lot of time if you accept orders to those specific restaurants. Now on the flip side of that, you also wanna try and figure out which restaurants usually have hidden tips in them. Because there are certain restaurants that are really expensive, when you go into the DoorDash app and order food, from them, they automatically suggest a really high tip. And so these are usually sit down restaurants or just expensive places in general. And so you can almost always count on there being a hidden tip at certain places. So make sure you look out for those. You can even write them down. I've started doing that. I just have a note in my phone. I just type it in if I get a hidden tip from that place. And so I know for the future, if that's gonna be a good order to accept and if it's gonna have a hidden tip in it. Next, if you're gonna be making $2,000, then it's probably gonna take you close to $100, at least 80. Because you're gonna be working this many hours, you're definitely gonna want to not get bored. It can be really hard to push through when you're doing 14, 15, 16 hour days. And so what I did was I made sure I had a good playlist to listen to. I made sure I downloaded some audiobooks to listen to and also found some good podcasts that I wanted to listen to throughout the week because let me tell you, it gets very boring doing the same thing, going to the same restaurants, delivering to the same neighborhoods. Like it gets extremely boring. And so you're gonna wanna have something to entertain you, entertain your mind and just keep you going because all the things I just listed are things that I wanted to listen to at home anyway. So if you can do it while you're out on the road, then it just kills two birds with one stone. And last but not least is you wanna be as quick as possible. Don't lollygag around. I saw so many dashers during my 100 hour work week that literally I would get to the restaurant or the place after them, they'd still be sitting in their car. I would go in, grab the order, and already be leaving by the time they even left their car. So you don't wanna be that dasher. You don't wanna be sitting there wasting time because it's gonna be extremely hard to hit $2,000 in a week if you're not on top of your game and if you're not trying your best to go as quickly as possible because if you can just shave like one to two minutes off every single order, then you're gonna be able to get so many more orders done and it's really gonna help you out in the long run. So there you guys have it. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully you can take these tips and apply them to your dashing and push through and make $2,000 a week. I'm really gonna try my best. Now that I have the feel for what it takes to work that amount of hours, I'm really gonna strive for $1,500 a week now because I think that's really doable in probably 50 to 70 hours. So that's my goal. Let me know down in the comments what your goals are now that it's starting to get warmer out. And if you enjoyed the video, make sure you subscribe. And if you guys want to see that 100 hour week, make sure you check out this video right here and I'll see you guys next time.